have this one scene where they're lying down on the grass and dancing and they're just yes. really just clicking together. And the camera does that. We are clinging to the surface of this planet while it spins through space a thousand miles an hour, held only by the mystery force called gravity. Wow. A lot of people panic when you tell them that and they just fall off. Oh. But I see you're not falling off. Okay, Ken, thank you so much for joining. So what movie are we going to talk about today? Gregory's Girl, from about 1980. It's a coming-of-age film I'm set in one of Scotland's comprehensive schools. It would have been comprehensive school at that particular point. And it's about Gregory, who's a gangly teenager who's kind of discovering life, discovering girls, sort of going into adulthood. Really, he's not there yet. I mean, physically, he might be sort of six foot tall and what have you and sprouting, but He's got no street-wise understanding of, of anything. So it, it follows him and his love affair, his infatuation with a girl. And this infatuation starts when his football team keeps losing and the team coach puts out a call for new players. And uh, Dorothy turns up to play football. She's flourished. She's a woman in, in, in all kind of respects in terms of her physical appearance and also her mental appearance as well, her mental thought processes. She's a lot, although the same age, she's just older by streets. She's older. She's more streetwise. She's... So, yeah, it's about him and his attempt to have a date, get a date with Dorothy. And just, just him being useless. <laughs> like I say, it's set in Scotland. And one of the things I'm aware of is that, I know because you've seen the film, but mm -hmm. there are at least two versions around. I, I've seen the British version, obviously, and I have the British DVD. And you have the internet version and the American DVD or the American copy. And I believe yours has been dubbed. Yours has been altered from the original version. So the relatively strong-ish Scottish accents have been dumbed down, have been changed to more, I'm not going to say RP English, but certainly a much softer accent than the standard British version. So, yeah, I mean, which, have you seen the British version? Have you had a chance to well, compare... I thought mine was the British version. The version that I originally watched, I'm still not exactly sure. I'm probably like, maybe I can look in the credits or something to see that. I did not hear any discernible differences, but I think you told me there's a, there is a scene where there absolutely is a difference. So I'm definitely going to oh. check that out later. Yeah. Well, it's, it's probably the first scene, which is the peeping Tom scene. And they're, they're talking, they're, they're peeping Tomming. It's, it's quite, it's a very funny scene actually, but very, very noticeable between the two versions. I kind of had a look at the version which was posted, which is on YouTube. I hadn't noticed anything, but then I watched that first scene and I just thought, oh, yes. So absolutely worth having a look at the, the first Peeping Tom scene and doing the comparison and probably putting the comparison up so everybody can see that. She's got a brazier. Take off. Take off. Transmit. Tell her to take off her bra. Take off your brassiere. Concentrate, you bastards. Concentrate. Concentrate. She's got a brassiere. Oh, take it off. Take it off. Transmit. Tell her to take off her bra. Take off your brassiere. Concentrate, you bastard. Concentrate. The coaches talked about cutting Gregory from the team because he's mm -hmm. awkward. He's just grown five inches. He like When boys grow that much very quickly, sometimes they just can't be comfortable in their own skin and they're always tripping on, over their own feet and the coach puts up an announcement that he's looking for new players to try out mm -hmm. and we have like four different boy players that are coming to try out and then here comes Dorothy and he's like well you, you're mistaken it's it's only for boys and she's like well the announcement didn't say so I saw the notice look I'm sorry you picked it up wrongly dear but it was boys I wanted for the trial didn't say so in the notice yeah, and she also mentions the fact that she, you can't discriminate. I think, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think legislation had come in 
just before that in relation to sex equality or gender equality, however, that, that particular piece of legislation was brought in. So they, he couldn't discriminate against her because she was a girl. And obviously she was just so much better than any of the boys playing. She was definitely the, the best person to pick in terms of going on to the football team, which was pretty much failing. Uh, the coach himself, Mr. McKenzie, he was taking football to the football team very, very serious. You'd think he was the coach of a, a premiership league team. He was he definitely took it a little too serious. But he he tries her out. The first game, Gregory goes from being a striker to being put in goal. Quite a nice piece of action, this, because it allows us as a viewer to listen to him talking to his friend who's who was the goalie who's now behind the goal. So it allows them to talk. It's a really nice, you know, he's still in the team, but he's been made a goalie, which is kind of, you would have thought he would have been kicking the ball around. It allows this discussion between the pair of them, between him and his friend. Sack the goalie and put a girl on the forward line. It's a madhouse. Watch the game, Andy. Watch the game. She's good. She can move. It's not right. It's unnatural. Um, about... You know, the fact that uh, this is football is not a girls game. Well, it is because, you know, girls play lacrosse or they play hockey and they're vicious. I mean, you know, so why shouldn't be playing football? But there's a there's a scene which is very funny where Dorothy scores a goal and everybody's crowding around her and kissing her. Even the opposition team. <laughs> it's just like, what a goal! Oh. A girl! Yeah, she's got a nice pair of legs as well, eh? Andy. Look at that! That's disgusting. That's, that's perverse. In, in a football field. With kids watching. Okay, so they've also, they're in the process of discovering girls as well. And uh, everybody, everybody is trying to get off with Dorothy. I, I'm going to use the word get off because that's the way we would say it in the UK. I think the US would probably say hit on Dorothy. So they're all trying to get off with Dorothy. They're all, you know, everybody is trying to is to, trying to get off with Dorothy. And there's a there's a scene also after that in the changing rooms. Both him and and Dorothy are chatting, and all of a sudden, a couple of a uh, couple of other students enter who are part of the school newspaper potentially, and they're just fawning over over Dorothy. Saturday nights are special. I like to do something special. Right. How about doing something special this Saturday? Come on, this is a dressing room. We ought to go and conduct your business somewhere else. Taking photographs and the reporter is just like, it's just embarrassing to watch. He's just literally trying to, to, to get off with, with Dorothy at this particular point. It is a rom-com also. So it's a romantic comedy as well. Very soft, very gentle. There's some lovely one-liners in it. I don't know whether what people will always get them or whether they're very specific to the UK, but there are some lovely, lovely one-liners in there. I mean, even having watched it a couple of times after some 40 years of the first time I saw this film, I was genuinely kind of like, wow, yeah, this is lovely. It's really, it's very nicely written. It's very subtle. Some of the things today would be considered politically incorrect or politically on the edge. But this is a film from 1980, you know. Right. We've moved on. We've moved on. But still a very, very f funny film in places. There's one um, one-liner that I can think of where the coach is talking to the principal and he's a little bit concerned because he's put Dorothy on the team and the principal said, oh, I understand there's a, a woman on the team or a girl on the team. And he's like, well, there might be. And then the principal, that's a really good thing. And then the principal says, well, my one concern is what happens in the locker room or the showers. And the coach says, well, there's no problem with that. She'll bring her own soap. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He just hasn't worked this one out. Um, yeah. We often hear, we have to see, have this, this situation where Gregory is desperately trying to get a date. He's tr desperately trying to make himself attractive to Dorothy to the point where he finds out during a chat with her that she had this, this little fling, this encounter with some Italian boys the previous year. So he decides he's going to learn Italian, <laughs> which is what you do, I think. You know, if you want to, um, if you want to be seen, if you want to get into somebody's good books is, you know, you'll, you'll do something 
which they find interesting or attractive simply because you also, you want to get into their good books. You want to get off with them. So he decides he's going to learn Italian. I'm slightly off to a tangent, but there's this penguin who keeps walking through shot. This kid who's dressed as a penguin who keeps walking through shot. Um, I've no idea why that's the case, but yeah. It may be something which 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 was relevant in 1980, but which I've just forgotten because old age has crept up on me. But yeah, if anybody spots the penguin who watches this film, because it is on YouTube, so you can find it very easily, I've no idea. Don't ask me why there's a penguin. <laughs> that was strange too. I felt like it was one of these movies where there's some strange comic reliefs going on. Tell all, dead all. In, in the film that just don't make sense. I mean, I, I would have left school probably just a couple of years earlier before this film came out. I think uh, 1980, um, I would have been 18. So it's, I'm not gonna say it's a true reflection of school at that particular time, but there's a lot of kind of truths in there. I mean, it's actually shot in a real school. I mean, there's a scene where in the toilets, uh, the boys' toilets, <laughs> Um, it's it's a den of iniquity. It's also they're sort of smoking, they're reading girly magazines, they're gambling. There's also an illicit trading cakes. Um, that are sitting on the, <laughs> sitting on the toilet. Just on the toilet. Going back to something I said previously, the school photographer and school journalist have printed up these photographs of Dorothy, and they're selling photographs of Dorothy. <laughs> I can't say that ever happened in my school, but certainly behind the bike sheds is where people would normally have these kinds of transactions where they'd be smoking. Super frowned on a port, of course. I think less likely today, but you know where things could be done outside of the sight of teachers. Mm. So, I mean, a, lo a, a lovely little scene because Prior to this, Gregory has purchased a photograph of Dorothy for like 20p. But in the toilets, they're being sold for like 10 and 15p. Um, <laughs> but also, going back to the Peeping Tom scene at the beginning of the film, there's a sign up on the toilet which says, Naughty Night Nurse Photographs, two sizes. Oh, <laughs> I missed that. Yes, yeah. yes. On the, on the toilet. So it's, you know, <laughs> I spotted that because he, he walked past it and I spotted the sign and I went, yeah, obviously they were looking to take photographs of this young nurse who's at a window with very little clothing on and they're looking to sell these photographs. So it is, yeah, uh, on, young entrepreneurs there, young entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah, so circling back, like, you know, different from my school, the school, and I went, I went to high school in the later 80s, early 90s. Before I got there, there was all kinds of smoking, cigarettes, mm. and pot in the bathrooms, apparently. And right before I got to school, there still was a smoking room for seniors that were 18. Mm. Um, now, there's no smoking at all allowed anywhere on the properties of, of schools. Mm. So much different. But some differences I noticed, like, they had a really, really long lunch break where they were able to practice soccer. Like, our lunches are 20 minutes, like, barely enough time to mm. get in line, get your lunch and eat. And they had a really long time to have that lunch break and, and practice soccer, it seemed. Yeah, I think they- yeah, I, th I, th I think, if I remember right, it was about an hour we got. Yeah. Because because I used to walk home, get lunch and come yeah. back. So it would have been about an hour. And that was, that was probably about a mile and a half. I right. was walking home. And I believe like my parents and my grandparents could walk home. But when I got to school, lunch was served in school and you only had 20 minutes. <clears throat> depending, depending upon your income, at that particular point, our schools would provide free school meals, certainly for, for the juniors, to some extent for the seniors. Our school finished at 16, then you went on to a sixth form college. Generally, worse for me, anyway, it was a different building in a different part of my town. Not that far away, but it, they were completely different buildings. Our school was very much for that up to 16 years of age. Yeah, but it was about an hour to for, for lunch for me. So, I mean, I mean, looking looking at the differences, anything else you spot different between your high schools and the UK? I mean, I would say definitely big differences, but I would watch a lot of movies back in the 80s just in general mm. about 
high school mm -hmm. and I found that high school was way different than what I thought it was going to be because I would watch mm -hmm. graphics club and 16 candles and I don't know all kinds of other high school movies and got to high school thinking it was going to be this really fun awesome place where there'd be all kinds of opportunities to hang out with friends and all that kind of stuff but it's mm -hmm. really regimented and really not we don't have those opportunities it seemed like they had a lot of opportunities to kind of like oh you had this free time to to hang out and a lot of more free time it seemed to me those were the different things yeah. I think of yeah I'm trying to remember back I think yeah school was probably it was relatively relaxed I can't I can't remember like I said it's 40 years ago so 40 odd years ago 45 years ago so I'm, I'm I'm struggling to kind of go that far back but I don't remember it being particularly pressured I think kids today are probably a lot more pressured in terms of exam results yeah. and stuff like that yeah I I there was nothing about it which struck me as being particularly strange. I mean, yes, there's a couple of bits and pieces where artistic license has been has been sort of embraced massively, but on the whole, I really felt it was a, a reasonable representation of my the school that I attended during those formative years. When I'm looking at this film as well, I think the, the there's more than just one relationship. There's more than just Gregory and his fatuation with Dorothy. His sister also has a little suitor. She has she has her own little boyfriend. Hiya. Hello. Carry your bag for you. I can't see you today. I've got to go up to the big school. What for? Oh, family trouble. Is it Gregory? Kiss what? He's fallen in love. And Gregory's incredibly protective towards her. Uh, there's a particular scene where he's sat with, I think it's his brother. It's never really that was confusing whether the, the, yeah he was his brother yeah. or his friend or his friend. But this his his I'm going to call him his brother. He sat watching a, a cookery program and Gregory singers. That's all you think about is food, food, food. And there's there's a lovely one liner in there was which uh, where he's where they're watching TV. His brother says, you're the goalie, she's the sweeper in terms of she's she's the one who's going out. She's the one who's playing for his affections, potentially. It's not him. He's totally incapable of going out there and sweeping her off her feet. And I just thought that was a lovely one-liner. OK, it's love. Go and attain her then. Sweep her off her feet. Oh, I forgot. You're the goalkeeper. She's a sweeper. Ha, ha. You're the goalie, she's the sweeper. I miss that. I just thought it was a lovely, a lovely line. But there's a knock on the door, and Gregory goes to the front door, thinking potentially it 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 might be Dorothy, but it's in fact his little sister's boyfriend. I think they're about eight or ten or something, and he throws out again some great liners like "shouldn't shouldn't you be smashing up phone boxes? This is all kind of illegal. You taking an underage girl." Uh, out for walks they're both the same age <laughs> but yes. he's super pro he's super protective over his sister because basically his sister is just she's about eight or ten it's, it's not i'm having to kind of judge on on her age but she's a lot younger than him but she's so much older in terms of she in terms of her understanding and she is the person who gives him all the advice he needs on how to deal with girls. She takes him out shopping. She's showing him colourful shirts and he's going, I, I, I want the brown one. No, 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 that's not, no, no, I want the brown one. And she's, you know, she's the person who really is bringing him out of his childhood, bringing him into adolescence. And funnily enough, Gregory's girl is not about Dorothy. It's about his little sister. She is Gregory's girl. Which is a lovely play on on this idea because we, you know, at this particular point, you're thinking Gregory's girl is Dorothy. It's this girl he's trying to win over, but in fact, Gregory's girl is his little sister, and they're kind of inseparable. They're absolutely inseparable in terms of, you know, she's constantly looking after him and he's looking after her, and they don't invade each other's space, but they're they're there for each other, which is lovely. I mean, it's a really it's a really nice little thing, but. It's almost a cameo role in some respects. She's She only kind of pops in occasionally. And she's not even given a credit at the beginning, which I found quite sad because, you know, she is she is fundamental in, in the storyline. 
I mean, did you did you clock that? Did you notice I that? Did, I didn't attribute her as being Gregory's girl. I kind of thought at the end, he kind of goes on the date where Dorothy doesn't show up, stands him up. And then one of her friends comes and meets him, says, she's not coming. Why don't you go? Why don't we take a walk and you can buy me some chips? And then he gets to the chip shop. They're eating chips and he's telling her some jokes. Oh, she also changes her clothes to this crazy, like as if she's going to a night and he's very uncomfortable being with her. And then another girl shows up and he hangs out with her for a while and they take a walk. And then all of a sudden it's Susan at the end, I believe, or Carol. Yeah. It's Susan. Um, it's Susan. Susan. Yeah. Susan. So he ends up with Susan, who I think has a crush on him all along because she's kind yeah. of like asking questions of Dorothy about him. Yeah. And they end up having really clicking and going to the park. And they're like, have this one scene where they're lying down on the grass and dancing. And they're just yes. really just clicking together. And the camera does that. We are clinging to the surface of this planet while it spins through space at a thousand miles an hour. Held only by the mystery force called gravity. Wow. A lot of people panic when you tell them that and they just fall off. Oh. But I see you're not falling off. Yes, it's a very different thing because he also yeah. tells, a, he tells a kind of a, a, not a joke, but a thing about how, how the earth is spinning so fast. Yeah, they go through this whole sequence of, of fi facts and figures. But I mean, I want to backtrack slightly because obviously you're right. What's happened, and you sort of see this occasionally where you see Dorothy and Susan chatting in the corridor, is the girls are controlling this. Obviously, Dorothy is not interested in Gregory at all, but she knows, as I understand, that Susan is interested and she organizes, Dorothy organizes this date with, with Gregory. She stands him up. One of the other friends comes. She picks Gregory up. She, as she says, she takes him to the chip shop. She, he then gets taken by another girl. And at the end of the day, he ends up being sort of led to Susan. And he's very confused. He has no idea what's happening. But the girls have got this completely controlled. They've organized this because they are just so much more ahead of the boys at this particular point. So they stage manage this this passy the parcel of Gregory being moved from one girl to another girl to another girl, eventually to Susan, and eventually to this really charming, as you said, this really charming date where they're walking around the park, they're dancing in several places, but they're just lying down and doing this dancing. And there's some lovely little shots of them dancing and being on a table and, and lying down on the table and dancing. And they start dealing with all these facts and figures. You know, uh, if you sneeze, it comes out at 100 miles an hour and just random numbers like 1,237,000 or I think they even throw in a CB reference, which is 10-4. CB was very big, was very big in the 80s, um, which came from the US. And there's this bit where eventually he says, uh, I've got another number, 11. I have to be home by 11. And then Susan walks him home. <laughs> There's no chivalry here. Susan walks him home. Total role reversal. So, and then they get to the front door. This, there's this scene where they're kissing quite passionately. They, they, they're kind of kissing. Susan says something like, you've stopped kissing like your aunt. What's my auntie going to see when I kiss her at Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> Madeline is actually listening. She's watching from the top window. Uh, she's watching her bigger brother, who's kind of just grown up a massive amount in terms of kissing this, this girl. And it's not the girl she thought it was going to be. It's not Dorothy. It's Susan. And then, you know, he's there's another scene where that leads directly to him being sat in bed with the white jacket, with the shirt, and uh, Madeline comes in and they have this, this chat, but it's at this particular point where it really is explained that she is Gregory's girl. Who's going to be Gregory's girl? You are. His girl, his sister is Gregory's girl. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just a nice film on a lot of levels. Some things have dated in this film, Politically correctness, there's a few bits where you get to go, 
yeah, all right, fine. But it was 40 odd years ago. I do want to like mention one other part that his his awkward friends that, you know, oh. see this going on, but they also make this one thing saying, no, the place to go is South America to oh. actually a city of Caracas where men outnumber, no, women outnumber men eight to one. The world. And then they have the sign that they're holding up on the side of a highway trying to get a ride to Caracas. Oh. That's not the way you spell Caracas anyway. What? What do you mean? Caracas is spelled with an A. C-A-S, not C-U-S. Why didn't you tell me that before? And then as they're like, he's like, oh, I just wasted four hours. And he throws the sign down. And as they're walking away, it shoots over to the highway sign and it says like Edinburgh and different places. And then, then spray painted on says Caracas, 9,000 miles away. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, all the boys are very inept. They're all very inept. And all the girls are very adept in terms of they, they have grown up. I think, I mean, there's a lot of role reversal because you see a scene where the boys are cooking and obviously his brother, we think, is an amazingly good cook. He's the person who's supplying the cakes, the pastries to sell in the toilets, the boys' toilets. The girls are in the science department. They're the ones who are handling sulfuric acid. I don't think we ever were allowed to, to deal with sulfuric acid, but they're the girls who are like the intelligent ones. They're dealing with these scientific processes that in the chem you know the chemistry they're also the ones leading everything they're just so much more advanced so there's a you know they 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 turn gender ideas upside down and that's 40 odd years ago which is really you know which is kind of quite nice in some respects it hasn't aged in that way it's it was shown great foresight in terms of looking forward you know at that particular point in life where I, in the uk things were radically changing so yeah i mean it's the, all the boys are gangly. They, the, the, the two boys I think you're talking about, they sit down at lunchtime and they're trying to chat up a couple of girls. And one of them just has no idea because he, he's telling the girl how they slaughter, how they kill veal. Yeah. She's, she's, not, she's, not she's not a chat of line. She's not a chat of line. She's not a chat of line. Oh, I'm going to throw something in here. Okay. There's, there's another lovely bit. This is all out of context. I'm so sorry because it's just popped into my head. He, he obviously gets he gets stood up. He gets taken to the chip shop. He buys some chips. And there's a bit where the other girl, where he gets left by the first girl. The second girl turns up. She looks into his bag of chips and she says, By the way, pickled onions and dates don't mix. You might have to do some kissing later on. Bye. Because he hasn't got a clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know it's just like I said that I think you know I just loved it because there are just these lovely little one-liners this isn't a raucous film this is just subtle nice little one-liners it's very it's very gentle if you're going to watch the version I'd say probably the dubbed version I believe it was actually dubbed by the original actors so yeah. it's not being dubbed by somebody else so the original actors have dubbed this it's probably going to be easier to understand. Obviously, for me, as a native, for me, somebody who's very used to the Scottish accent, not an issue. But I would say at least one of the links on YouTube is the Universal Stroke American Stroke more RP version. I think basically they've taken out the more severe accent and overdubbed that with a softer accent. A lot of it, I think, has probably been left I thought initially when 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 we were choosing the next film, I thought this would be great because it's going to give those learning English a bit of a challenge with a slightly different accent to what they're normally used to hearing. I might have to think that one through a bit. I might have to think it through a bit. I think it might give some people a little more of a problem. But hey, you know, English is a whole series of accents. You've got to learn to be able to pick these accents up and deal with them and understand them. So I think I, I still, I'm still going to go, this is a good film to, to watch. It's an easy film. It's a gentle film. Again, there's not a lot of music. It's not really laid on top of dialogue. So dialogue is clear of music, but it's probably less clear because of the accent. So, I mean, that's the last, 
you know, that's the, the 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 thing I will say about this film. Yeah, and thank you so much. I think it was a great film, and like at first I was like, oh, this is um, it's something I never would have picked, but mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. And each time that I watched it again, I I saw different things that I that was like, oh, I really like this this movie. Brilliant, brilliant. So, what are you going to throw at us next time? What's the next film? Well, I was actually um thinking about something a little different, and it's actually the movie Hidden Figures, which was is it's probably the most recent film of anything yeah. that I have that we have talked about reviewing. I think it was filmed in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, four yeah. five. It's yeah, it's 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 it is. Remember? It's really it's, the last yeah. movie I went to the theater with, and I brought my daughter, okay. and it's about the whole. NASA program, but it's about how yeah. how Afri African American women were instrumental because they they were they were the mathematicians that were mm -hmm. instrumental in really doing the programming to be able to to get the whole Apollo mission off the ground, and they found yeah. errors and and it's also in, along with that it's also about the racial inequalities. So I think it would be like a nice like little change and and a more recent film. It's a great film. Um, I saw it at the cinema when it came out. Yeah, brilliant choice, brilliant choice. I mean, yeah, more than happy to watch that again. More than happy. Thank you very much for that uh, that selection. Yeah, um, I don't have it on DVD, so I'm going to have to hit eBay. Oh, eBay, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining, and until next time. Thank you very much. Take care.